the governor, in advance of his visitors, ascended one or two steps, and, throwing open the leaves of the great hall window, found himself close to Little Pearl. The shadow of the curtain fell on Hester Prynne, and partially concealed her. "'What have we here?' said Governor Bellingham, looking with surprise at the scarlet little figure before him. "'I profess, I have never seen the like since my days of vanity in old King James's time, when I was wont to esteem it a high favour to be admitted to a court mask. There used to be a swarm of these small apparitions in holiday time, and we called them children of the Lord of Misrule. But how gets such a guest into my hall?' "'Aye, indeed,' cried good old Mr. Wilson. "'What little bird of scarlet plumage may this be? "'Methinks I have seen just such figures "'when the sun has been shining through a richly painted window "'and tracing out the golden and crimson images across the floor. "'But that was in the old land. "'Prithee, young one, who art thou? "'And what has ailed thy mother to bedizen thee in this strange fashion? "'Art thou a Christian child, ha? Huh? "'Dost know thy catechism?' Or art thou one of those naughty elves or fairies whom we thought to have left behind us with other relics of papistry in merry old England? I am my mother's child, answered the scarlet vision, and my name is Pearl. Pearl? Ruby, rather, or coral, or red rose at the very least, judging from thy hue, responded the old minister, putting forth his hand in a vain attempt to pat little Pearl on the cheek. But where is this mother of thine? Ah! I see, he added, and turning to Governor Bellingham whispered, This is the self-same child of whom we have held speech together, and behold, here the unhappy woman, Hester Prynne, her mother. Sayest thou so? cried the Governor. Nay, we might have judged that such a child's mother must needs be a scarlet woman, and a worthy type of her of Babylon. But she comes at a good time, and we will look into this matter forthwith. Governor Bellingham stepped through the window into the hall, followed by his three guests. Hester Prynne, said he, fixing his naturally stern regard on the wearer of the scarlet letter, there have been much questions concerning thee of late. The point has been weightily discussed, whether we, that are of authority and influence, do well discharge our consciences by trusting an immortal soul such as there is in yonder child to the guidance of one who has stumbled and fallen amid the pitfalls of this world. Speak thou, the child's own mother. Were it not, thinkest thou, for thy little one's temporal and eternal welfare, that she be taken out of thy charge, and clad soberly, and disciplined strictly, and instructed in the truths of heaven and earth, what canst thou do for the child in this kind? I can teach my little pearl what I have learned from this, answered Hester Prynne laying her finger on the red token. Woman, it is thy badge of shame, replied the stern magistrate. It is because of the stain which that letter indicates that we would transfer thy child to other hands. Nevertheless, said the mother calmly, though growing more pale, this badge hath taught me, it daily teaches me, it is teaching me at this moment, lessons whereof my child may be wiser and better, albeit they can profit nothing to myself. We will judge warily, said Bellingham, and look well what we are about to do. Good Master Wilson, I pray you, examine this pearl, since that is her name, and see whether she hath had such Christian nurture as befits a child of her age. The old minister seated himself in an armchair, and made an effort to draw pearl betwixt his knees. But the child, unaccustomed to the touch or familiarity of any but a mother, escaped through the open window, and stood on the upper step, looking like a wild, tropical bird of rich plumage, ready to take flight into the upper air. Mr. Wilson, not a little astonished at this outbreak, for he was a grandfatherly sort of personage, and usually a vast favourite with children, essayed, however, to proceed with the examination. Pearl, said he, with great solemnity, thou must take heed to instruction that so, in due season, thou mayest wear in thy bosom the pearl of great price. Canst thou tell me, my child, who made thee? Now, Pearl knew well enough who made her, for Hester Prynne, the daughter of a pious home, very soon after her talk with the child about her heavenly father, had begun to inform her of those truths which the human spirit, at whatever age of immaturity, imbibes with such eager interest. Pearl, therefore, so large with the attainments of her three years' lifetime, could have borne a fair examination in the New England primer, 